has shared the identity of the Shadow Client, a former mercenary and bodyguard by the name of Lucas Gray. His past is a black void, but our analysts are digging deep. Meanwhile, we've had a breakthrough of our own. Comparing the malicious attack patterns with global shipping and transportation routes, we've figured out how Mr. Gray and his paramilitaries move around the world undetected. They're using the distribution network of the Delgado Cartel, Colombia's biggest drug manufacturer. Clearly, Gray must have struck a deal with the Delgados. Consequently, if we can cripple the cartel, we can severely limit the militia strike range. But to do so, we need to slay a three-headed serpent. Sociopathic cartel head Rico Delgado and his two closest lieutenants, PR guru Andrea Martinez and savant chemist Jorge Franco. With equal parts guts and guile, Rico Delgado runs a thriving billion-dollar criminal empire. The word is, the brutal and volatile cartel head is hell-bent on becoming the number one drug lord in the world. To achieve this, Martinez, a childhood friend of Delgado's, has been buttering up state leaders and decision-makers, paving the way for an expansion of the Delgado Logistics Network, while the brilliant but aloof and antisocial Franco has been hard at work developing a new type of super cocaine. So, three of Colombia's most infamous crime lords inhabiting a decidedly hostile environment. I will leave you to prepare.
way of playing with all of our videos, you know, all the Let's search this uh, Intel Rico Delgado. Rico Delgado is the directory head of the Delgado cartel, a supremely successful family based drug cartel based in Colombia. Rico uses his ruthless nature and personal charm to sway the minds of adversaries and partners alike, favoring the old ways of both offering people the choice between silver and lead. Rico Delgado who grew up with his younger brother Hector in the volatile cartel business during the early 90s. Rico was quickly chosen to be the to be successor of his father, though he had to postpone that plan when the Colombian government cracked down hard on the cartels. Rico had to flee the family and escape with his mother and younger brother when the military stopped it only the compound and just days later he would see pictures of his dead father in the newspaper and the hood on his mother's face. Live, um, living with his mother's relatives in San Diego and spending summers with his uncle Fernando who ran the infamous Delgado Cartel out of his old vineyard. Rico eventually decided he needed to go back home to Colombia to build his father's empire. What met him was a ruin but the people in the nearby village still remembered the good Don Delgado and uh, what he had done for the villagers. The locals helped Ricardo build, rebuild parts of the Delgado mansion grounds, and he also discovered that he that the locals. Conversations in foreign languages with with bur burly lo looking men, clearly not from the government. Domestic abuse was a regular thing in the Franco household, and the children quickly learned to stay away from the house when George Senior was in one of his moods. When when Pino Chet Pino Chet took over in when Pino Chet took over in 1973, violence came with him. George Frank. Franco Sr. vanished without a trace one evening in 1976 and two weeks later, young George and his, son and his siblings were crossing the border to Argentina. From there, they traveled to the United States. While Franco was never quite sure how his mother managed to get them into the U.S., he later assumed that his mother simply 
provided the American government, government with all the information sh she had overheard his father sharing with the Russians that, fre that, frequented, that frequented their home. Franco eventually graduated from college in the early 1980s. Holding a degree in natural science with a chemistry focus, he got a job working for a local high school where he taught chemistry and physics for many years while at the same time building up a rather unhealthy gambling addiction. After after Pino Chet, Pino Chet was removed from power, Franco decided to go back to China to discover the roots. His mother had passed a few years earlier. Franco never really found the U.S. to be a suitable home. Besides, he owned, he owned a substantial amount of money to a local. Um, he uh, not he owned. He owed a substantial amount of money to a local gangster due to his habit of betting on the wrong horse. So Franco simply ran away, leaving a wife and young child to fend for themselves. While Franco didn't discover what happened to his what happened to his father, he did manage to find some rather unsavory people. One of these people was Fernando Delgado. That name sounds quite familiar to me. He happened to have played for blood money. Blood money. A winemaker of small repute and a known drug manufacturer who would often lend money to people in exchange for favors. On learning that Franco was a gifted chemist, Delgado told him he'd waive any debts in exchange for his services as a chemist. Franco agreed and found that his new his vacation suited his needs very well indeed. He stayed with the Delgados until 2004 when everything was torn down around him. Don Fernando and his son were killed in a freak accident and the empire crumbled around him. Franco, fearing for his life and suffering from severe post-traumatic um, disorder PTSD, went into hiding but was brought back. A few years later, when Fernando Delgado's young nephew Rico found him and brought him to Colombia, Franco was never quite the same though. Franco has now been working with Rico Delgado and his partner, uh, Andrea Martin, Martinez, for more than a decade. He has developed several, several new brands of cocaine for an ever hungrier market and it is considered a full partner in the Delgado cartel. He still suffers from the occasional lapse in gambling but has managed to turn its focus more and more on running the manufacturing part of the business. Andrea Mar Martinez, Mart Martinez is a cutthroat former marketing executive, now um, former marketing ex executive, now working for the Delgado Empire. She worked in advertising for a few years, but was drawn to the dangerous life of her brother friends, the Delgado brothers, Rico and Hector. The allure, um, the allure of the drug business was tempting. So when Ricardo Delgado one day asked her to come along and reveal the Delgado Empire, she immediately quit her job and went with him and Hector, the youngest daughter of the head of a Chilean, um, the youngest daughter of the head of the Chilean cocaine cartel. Andrea Mart Mart Martinez, Martinez grew up playing in the vast coca field of her family's rural estate. When Andrea was 14, it was determined that she was to be sent abroad to study while her older brothers were to take over the family business. Her father wanted her as far away from his um, dangerous trade as possible. However, over a week before the, um, her planned departure to the United States, the government cracked down on the Mar um, Mar Mar Martinez estate and slaughtered everyone there while Andrea was visiting her uncle. Fernando Delgado now offered Andrea um, um, 
now now orphaned Kendra was taken in by Don Fernando Fernando and treated as his own do daughter. Fernando Delgado honored his friend's wishes and sent Andrea to America to get an education. She returned to Chile in 2000 and 2002, living at the Delgado Villa for a few months before moving to San Diego, where she met up with Rico Delgado and formed a friendship with him. Determined to honor her father's wish and her uncle's expectations, she got a job in the advertising industry and worked there for a couple of years as a marketing executive. But tragedy struck as Fernando Delgado and his own son were killed in a apparent accident in 2004. The effective dismantling of the heart of all of the deaths, however, brought back the spectrum of the past. Martin realized that some hidden some hidden hand was behind the deck. Worried for her life, she fled Chile and ended up in Colombia with Ricardo the God and his brother Hector. Together, the trial, the trio started work would eventually become the reform the Rado Cotton, quickly starting a new business and getting Martinez hands dirty by creating a series of legal fronts for what would quickly grow into a substantial criminal empire. A vital part of Delgado's organization, Andrea Martinez travels the world, the world under a range of assumed identities, expanding the business and making sure everything runs smoothly. Um, where Del Delgado, uh, where Rico Delgado is responsible for the trafficking size of the business, um, Martinez is responsible for the business for the business side of the things. She engages in the bribing of officials, extortion and information gathering that ensures the other cartel are kept in check. And she keeps the public eye away from Rico Delgado through her magnificent skills at spinning stories and ex 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 extorting people based on the information she gathers through networks like Iago. Sounds quite like a social engineer to me, yeah, instead of a marketing executive. But uh, yeah, she, she looks quite char charismatic and charming. <laughs> village of Santa Fortuna awaits you deep inside the Colombian rainforest. An iron-fisted Delgado cartel rules over the village and its surroundings. Security around Santa Fortuna and the closed-off cartel compound is extremely tight. Armed sicarios patrol the streets of the village, ready to enforce harsh punishments to those who do not comply. Rumors persist of hidden transportation cave systems connecting the village, the cartel compound, and the hidden coca fields beyond. It is a rare occurrence to have all three cartel leaders present in the village at the same time. Expect that all targets are protected by scrupulous killers armed with automatic weapons. Rico Delgado inhabits his fortified mansion on the outskirts of the village while Andrea Martinez can be found in her village office or around Santa Fortuna itself. And Jorge Franco is engaged in development of a new drug in his field laboratory. Happy hunting, 47. Looking like 
Pro Caballero. Classy Rico Delgado has commissioned a statue of himself to adorn the village square. Today's unveiling ceremony will feature a local band, and Rico Delgado will attend in person. I suggest you take a closer look, 47. This should be a unique opportunity to engage Delgado outside the walls of his compound. I didn't see anything. Gotta go check the stage. That is Andrea Martinez, the Delgado Cartel PR officer and public face. You're going to keep going, aren't you? Okay, let me have it. Get all the gossip off your chest. 
some cave entrance while in the pharmacy, but it broke. Bummer, man. So, a drug dealer from Sapienza has been testing a new method for smuggling Delgado brand cocaine into Europe, baking the substance into souvenirs, coated in a special anti-drug detection paint solution. The dealer has been traveling the globe, testing the method. However, he accidentally broke the souvenir on arrival and needs to mend it before going to see Franco. Maybe just move together? I don't know. I think it's gonna ruin the truck and mule. The truck and mule, the truck dealer from San Pienza, has been testing a new method for smuggling Togado brand cocaine into Europe, making the substance into souvenirs coated, coated in a special anti drug detection paint solution. The has been traveling the road testing. Taste test. This Franco guy is like a bloodhound, but you know, with taste, not smell. You know? Yeah, man, that's bad. Oh, my man. Hey, listen. Do you have any clues? 
No. Yeah, these figures.
What's up, yo? I'm gonna need to frisk you if you want to come through here. Hey, yo, there's no need to flex. You ain't got to impress me. Okay, everything seems to be in order here. Hey, yo, get to step in, homie. takes to get what I need. to sample his handiwork. Confirmed down. Nice work, 47. 